Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another Five Good Minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of Matthew, and we're in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, and I'm going to be reading verses uh, 18 through 22. Now, when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up to him and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. Jesus said, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Well, we know from Luke's Gospel that immediately following the healing of Peter's mother and that night of healing, there at Peter's house on the next day, Jesus goes to the seashore, and then he crosses in Peter's boat, one would think with Peter and Andrew. We also know that James and John were in their boat and that they came as well. And we, we, and we also um, know that at that point they, they left everything to follow him. So um, Jesus wanted to go to the other side. The other side of what? Well, Matthew doesn't tell us, but we're assuming the Sea of Galilee. Um, so while he's there, um, someone, these two men come up to him, and they want to follow him. Um, and it says in the text um, that the scribe was the first one to come up to him, and the second was a disciple. We're assuming his disciple, but we're not sure. And this disciple is described uh, as another disciple. Does that mean other than Peter, who's not really a disciple yet, we think, unless this is out of uh, chronological order, um, or that the scribe himself was a disciple, or his disciple, the word disciple, follower, being loosely used to describe the whole crowd that just followed him from place to place, like like a, like like puppies, you know, to see what he would do next. It's not quite sure. We know who the scribe is. We've already met a centurion in this chapter, and now we're meeting a scribe. These men were copyists and scholars and experts in the law, but primarily they were copiers. The Hebrew word for scribe means to count, not to write letters, but to count numbers. And the reason for that is that was mainly their job. That was their quality control. They knew how many letters were in the book of Genesis, how many letters were in the Pentateuch, what the middle letter of the book of Genesis was, what the middle letter of Leviticus was, what the middle letter of the first five books was. They knew how many uh, letters were in each psalm and what the middle letter of each psalm was. So when you hand copied a manuscript, you could go back and do the quality control, and it worked, and it worked for thousands of years. Back in the 1940s, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, and they pulled out the Isaiah Scroll, which dated from the 2nd century, 3rd century BC, and they compared it to the oldest Hebrew texts that were then in existence, which were at least a thousand years older, they were identical. They were identical because the quality control was so good. These scribes were in every way as professional as the centurions that we've already described. And because they had that <clears throat> precise encyclopedic knowledge of the law, these were not men who paraphrased anything. They could tell you verbatim everything that was written everywhere in the law. They were valued teachers and experts on the law. And, and, and we read about many scribes who were so interested in Jesus, and one understands why. And this scribe came to Jesus, and he said to Jesus, um, I want to follow you wherever you go. Jesus doesn't tell him not to. He's just telling him, listen, that means you're going to live the life of a pilgrim. That means you're going to be headed home your whole life, never getting there until all is accomplished, because that's, that's the life that Jesus is leading. And then another man says, let me go bury my father first. 
I don't think that Jesus is telling him not to take care of his family. I think that Jesus is saying, don't look back, look forward, the way the Apostle Paul does in Philippians chapter 3. I don't look behind, but I look ahead and press towards a high calling uh, of the prize that I have in Jesus Christ. Um, and maybe this is just an excuse, I don't know. But, but Jesus is completely honest to, when he says, follow me, he's not promising you, you know, um, a glamping trip. Whenever people want to follow him, he's quite honest about what that means. And, and you know, men like the Apostle Paul would forego having a family. Peter would have to take his wife with him on the road. It was not an easy task. There, there, it, it, it is a it is a, a seminal decision that you make to not just take one path that branches off of another, but to turn in a completely different direction and go in a completely different way. And Jesus makes that clear from the very beginning. Well, Jesus is going to still the storm next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.